If you've been following my channel, then you probably know that my drone took a permanent dip in the ocean at the start of 2020, but today we're going to fix that by building a new one. So let's just jump right into the build video. We're going to start this build off by opening up the kebab glide frame. We've got four arms, the top plate, the bottom plate, the middle plate, and a ton of hardware. So there it all is. We're going to put the second longest screws in the four inner holes like so, and the third longest screws in the uh, four outer holes, just like so. And we're going to screw those eight screws down in to the arms to create this little assembly right here. And then we're going to screw that whole assembly down onto the bottom plate and make sure to put four stack screws in first because you can't access them later. And we're going to tighten them down, as I said, and then once you're done, you should flip it over and you're going to get something that looks just like this. And now we're going to add some nuts into the four holes over here and we're going to screw the remaining four screws on the bottom up into those nuts, just like that. And now we're going to add some standoffs onto these four screws. So one there, another one here, and then a third one and a fourth one. And now we're going to add some more screws on the bottom side of the plate just so we can put the remaining standoffs. So we're gonna have four standoffs, one here, one there, and then another two in the front of the frame here and here. Next, we're gonna unpack the motors. These are the Sing Eco Edition um, 2306, 17,000 kV. So they're gonna be running 6S and that's perfect. And of course, we've got four of them. So here they all are. And now we're gonna screw them to the arms. I like to balance them under the arms and then drop the four screws in and then tighten them down fairly tight so that they don't come undone while I'm flying, because that would be exceptionally bad. And once all four of them are screwed in, it's going to look something like this. And now we can unpack the Xylo 45 amp 32 bit <clears throat> ESC. The package comes with the board itself. It comes with two capacitors, uh, two battery leads, an XT60, and we're going to put the grommets down on the standoffs. And then we're also going to slip the ESC down and the grommets will give it that clearance just like that. Next, we're going to pre-tin all 12 pads, three per motor, four motors on both sides of the ESC. Just give it a you know, healthy dose of solder. And when it's all done, it should look just like that. Now we're going to cut the motor wires where they need to trim them, uh, strip them, and then add some solder. That's pre-tinning. And then we're going to solder them straight to the ESC. It doesn't matter what order because we can fix that in software. So just uh, solder all three motor wires to the ESC. Just like that, when you're done, all four motors should be hooked up and it should look like this. So now we're going to add some electrical tape around the arms. I do this just to keep everything tidy. I also think it looks good and I think it's just a good build habit for all uh, builders. So now we're going to get the XT60 ready. We're going to put some solder into the little cup and then we're going to wiggle the wire into that cup, applying constant pressure. And we're going to do that to the other side, add some solder, and then wiggle that wire into the little hole, uh, just like so. That's going to give us a really strong connection. Um, when you're done, it should look like, like that. So now we're going to put the plastic shroud on and slide it down and clip it to the XT60. And now we're going to pre-tin this Tiny's LED. It can run directly off of 6S battery power, so no need for any 5 volts. We're going to solder a positive wire and a negative wire. And I like to add a bit of heat shrink, just clear heat shrink over the LED just to protect it. And then we're going to stick it down to the frame with some double sided tape. And I'm going to put it in the back. Uh, it's going to be easy to see, especially when we're flying in forward flight and it's out of the way. And we're just going to route the wires through the hole right there. And they're going to stick out right where the ESC battery pads are. So that is just perfect for us. And now we're going to measure out how long our battery cable needs to be. And then I'm just going to cut it where it needs to be so that we can uh, minimize weight right here. And we're going to pre-tin this XT60 with a healthy amount of solder just so we get a nice strong connection later. And then, of course, we have to pre-tin the ESC pads. And unfortunately, my soldering iron can't get hot enough really for this section. So you'll see I'm going to have some technical difficulties in the near future. But for now, just make sure to uh, pre-tin these two pads with a good amount of solder. And right up next, we're going to solder the capacitor to these leads. We got the, uh, the positive going to the positive side, the negative going to the negative pad on the ESC, just like so. Pretty intuitive. And then, we're, of course, we're going to do the uh, Tiny's LED, 
the positive goes to the positive, obviously, and then we're going to route, uh, route the ground wire under the capacitor and then solder it right there. So that's going to give us uh, a strong connection out of the way and nice and tidy. Next, we're going to put the, e, uh, the ESC and the battery leads together. As you can see, my soldering iron isn't hot enough, so my joint is kind of pretty crappy, but hopefully yours will be better. Um, the second one, I think, comes out a little better because I think it heats up again. So a really good solder joint, all of the solder will flow together to form one uh, bead, and that's ideally what we want, and that will be the strongest connection with the most reliability. reliability. And next up, we're going to open up the flight controller. This is F7. It's also a 20 by 20, and it comes with some harnesses, which we will adapt as well as some hardware. And we're going to slip these rubber grommets through the holes just to soft mount it and, you know, isolate it from vibrations. And we're also going to slip these gold things in just to adapt it. Next, I made this little harness. It's kind of confusing, but just read the manuals of all the parts you're using and hopefully you'll be able to create one that will work so you get all of the motors spinning the right way. And next way, uh, next up, we're going to put these M2 screws through the bottom plate right in the front and this is going to hold the flight controller. We're going to pre-tin the flight controller now. This is a very difficult task because the 20 by 20 means that the pads are very small, but if you bridge some of them like I did at some points, just uh, do your best to kind of scrape off the solder with the hot soldering iron but I'll review in a moment. So we're going to uh, pre-tin the, the, all of the pads on this side right here, and then we're going to do the first four on this side, and then none on the bottom, which is nice and convenient. And we're going to add some little spacers onto the standoffs, and then we're going to plug in the flight controller with the jumper that we made, and then I messed up, but you put the gold things on first, and then you slide the flight controller over them, so hopefully you won't make the same mistake that I did. And just like that, we're done with the flight controller side. And now we're going to move on to the camera. This is the Cadex Radel. It's, uh, it's comparable, comparable to the Micro Eagle, and it's a lot cheaper. So we're going to use that one. And we're going to screw the included TPU camera mounts to either side with the screws that came with the camera. And, you know, just don't screw them too tight so that you can adjust the angle later. And I find this is the best way to do it. And then we can slip this whole unit onto the frame. Um, that's going to be the simplest way to do this camera. So just follow along with what I do right here. Next, we're going to cut the camera lead for the camera. It needs to be really short because the camera doesn't, uh, this camera is really close to the flight controller. We're going to pre-tin the three wires and then we're going to solder that directly to the flight controller in the following order. Uh, we've got the red one first and then we got the black one and then we've got the yellow one last. If you're following along exactly, just copy exactly what I do, and you should be good to go. The short pigtail will be good because hopefully there'll be less interference with shorter cables, and it's also just nice and clean. So now we're going to prepare the VTX. This is the TBS Unify Pro 5 volt edition. We're going to cut the heat shrink off the back, um, just peel it away, and now we're going to put it on this white noise VTX board so it holds the VTX nicely. So just line it up with the diagram, and then use a little solder fillet, fillet I think it's called just to hold it in place. And then unfortunately, my remaining solder fillets don't come out well, so I end up having to use the included uh, pigtail cable that just snaps into the, uh, into the VTX, but that's just fine. So next, we're going to put some standoffs onto the 30 by 30 stack so that we can hold the VTX um, just like so. And next, we're going to get the TBS Crossfire Micro receiver, or maybe it's the Nano, I can't remember, but we're going to put a ground, a 5 volt, and then two signal wires, just like so. Next, we're going to snap on the antenna and then slide some heat shrink over it, cut it to where it needs to be, and I'm going to shrink it down just to keep it nice and tidy. We're going to give the other sides of the wires some pre-tinning, uh, just so it's nice and easy to solder them up later, and we're going to solder those to the flight controller, first the black one, then the red one. Again, if you're following along exactly, just do what I do. If not, just use the manual. You'll figure it out. I have faith in you guys. Just like so. Next, we're going to give those wires a twist and put some double-sided tape on the receiver. And then we're just going to stick it to the back of the frame, just like this. We're also going to use a zip tie to make sure that it's really held down well and doesn't come loose during any flight. And now we're going to wire it up. Unfortunately, I do a very bad job of displaying this, so I've got a little 
a screenshot here. So just follow along there. You'll understand. Anyways, now we are going to add some grommets on top of the 30 by 30 stack and finish it off with the four included M3 nuts. And that's our central stack done, as you'll see in a moment. And now we're going to zip tie the antenna to the bottom of the arms using two zip ties in an X formation. And this is by far the best way to do it with the antenna on the arm like so. So if you want to do this, just follow along exactly. We're going to cut those zip ties short and we're going to wrap the connection between the VTX and the antenna with some electrical tape to prevent it from shorting out against the frame because it's going to mount up erect directly to the top plate like so. And here I'd like to point out that I shortened the stack screws for the FC just to make it a little cleaner. I just cut them off and then I've screwed the bolts back on. And now I'm going to zip tie the XT60 connector to the back standoff and I'm going to uh, put some battery straps through the top plate, just like so. Next, we're going to zip tie the antenna to the top plate. Um, it should look like that. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then we are going to put one more zip tie around the VTX to make sure that the UFL connector doesn't uh, come undone because that's a pretty, pretty delicate one. And finally, we're going to put the four screws onto the top plate. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. We got the four countersunk screws, which is nice, makes it nice and clean and seamless. And I'm going to add some Uma Grip, which is just sort of a battery sticky pad. And this is always good practice to make sure the battery, you know, stays nice and attached to your quad. A couple pieces here and there, and then a few more in the back should be just fine. And we're going to add the GoPro Hero 7 camera mount with four screws, two in the front, two in the back, just like so. And that should hold it nice and secure. It also uh, finishes off the frames assembly. Now we're gonna slip a battery into the loops. And we're gonna plug it in and we are good We got that nice LED and everything is, is is working just fine on the scales It comes in at around 650 grams with the hero 7. So it's not the lightest It's not the heaviest either, but doesn't really matter should fly great now We're gonna do a quick beta flight setup we're going to turn Serial RX on that UART. We've got the TBS Smart Audio and then ESC Telemetry. And then we also, this is just my uh, configuration. We've got 8K, 8K, uh, DShot 600, et cetera, et cetera. Just follow along exactly if you want the exact thing. We're running Crossfire. And then we've also got Telemetry left on. And then we've got, you know, some other settings enabled. Just follow along exactly. It's up to you. If not, just do whatever. Next, I had to calibrate the battery voltage because it wasn't working well. Just use the calibrate button in the lower right-hand corner. Next, these are my rates. I like them at 0 0.8. And then the filter settings are just um, what Joshua Bardwell uses in RPM filtering. Make sure to have AUX4 set to RSSI. And then we're using this channel mapping just to make sure that it works with my Tyrannus QX7. And then this is a pretty important part. We've got our mode set up. But most importantly, there's this one called User1. And this needs to be enabled or else the VTX won't work. And finally, this is what my OSD looks like. And then finally, we've got the VTX lookup table, which is pretty easy. Just follow the directions on the screen. And finally, we have come to the end of the build. And this is what it looks like. I've screwed some props on here. And thank you guys so much for watching. And the maiden of this quad will be coming out shortly on my channel.